Good morning. Welcome to today's class. This morning we will discuss glycolysis. Remember, in the video before this, we had introduction to the topic carbohydrates under glucose. At the end of the video, we said that the next video being this, being this one, this particular one, we will discuss what glycolysis is all about. Now, we are going to discuss glycolysis in full. What is glycolysis? Glycolysis is a word derived from two words, glycose and lysis. I said glycose and lysis. Glycose, other name for glucose. Lysis simply means metabolic breakdown. Now, bringing these two key words together, we have glycolysis. That is, metabolic breakdown of glucose. Remember that this metabolic breakdown we talk about takes place in most organisms at the cell cytosols. So, it is an oxygen-independent pathway. It doesn't require oxygen. Why it takes place in the cell cytosol is that it's because most of the glycolytic enzymes are located there. Okay? So, in this video, we want to see all the steps, about 10 steps involved in glycolytic pathway. We also want to see the cofactor, the coenzymes, the enzymes involved in this pathway. Where we have reversible and where we also have irreversible reaction. So we have a lot to learn in this video. Glycolytic pathway has two parts or two stages. One, the preparatory part and two, the payoff part. In the preparatory part, ATP, which is the energy molecule that the body makes use of, is being consumed. Then, in the payoff part, ATP, which is the energy molecule that the body makes use of, will be produced. So, it is that energy ATP that was produced that the body will now make use of finally. Now, after we are through with this glycolysis and get to the last stage of it, which we will see in this video, the last stage of it is what we enter into the mitochondrion where it continue with the process of tricarboxylic acid cycle known as Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. It will continue there, undergo other processes, then the product it will also have will join with the product we have in glycolysis and enter into electron transport chain where more ATP will be produced for energy to make use of. So, we have a lot to learn in this video. Let's see the pathway in proper. First, glucose. We have glucose. Now, what is the structure of glucose? It is what is the structure of glucose? It is drawn this way. Glucose is an aldehyde. So because of that, it has oxygen atom in its structure. Here we have CH2OH. Here we have OH. Here we have OH, here we have and here we have this can be called alpha glucose. Why do we say that it can be called alpha glucose? It's because the OH here is down. If the OH here is up, it will be called, if the OH here is up and hydrogen is down, it will be called beta glucose. So, this is our glucose. 
we'll talk about. Let's put it at the top, please. So, this is the glucose we talk about that is the end product of carbohydrate food we just take into the body. Now, it will be added by an enzyme called hexokinase. This enzyme will work with a coenzyme called a coenzyme which is in energy form or energy molecule which is called adenine triphosphate to give us ADP in presence of cofactor called magnesium. So, this is the first stage of glycolytic pathway. This is glucose, this is hexokinase doing its work, then this is the cofactor magnesium, this is energy ATP in form of ATP that the that will be consumed for this glucose to be able to break down to give us glucose phosphate. So, this glucose phosphate, that is what it will give us once this glucose is being broken down by hexokinase in presence of magnesium as cofactor and in presence of energy in form of ATP consumed. Now, we now have the structure for glucose phosphate to be this way. So, look at the structure. So, look at how we name it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, glucose, 6, phosphate. So, that means that this is what it will give you when this is a kind of in presence of all this we call cofactors and coenzyme, it will give us this. Now, this is stage 1. It's still under preparatory stage. It's still under preparatory stage. Then, from this glucose phosphate, there will be an irreversible reaction that will take place. This irreversible reaction will be producing glucose phosphate. Fructose phosphate. In the presence of phospho Phosphohexose isomerase or phospho or phosphoglucose isomerase.
So, this is the enzyme that is involved in breaking down this to fructose phosphate. Then, what is the structure of fructose phosphate? Let's sketch it. So, this is what we call fructose phosphate. So, this glucose phosphate successfully was broken down by this enzyme to fructose phosphate. You can see that in this second stage, there is no cofactor required and there is no coenzyme required. Only enzyme is required for this conversion. Then from here, we we'll continue. We have fructose phosphate. Then, this fructose phosphate will undergo irreversible reaction. Here it is reversible. Here it is irreversible. It will undergo irreversible reaction in presence of ATP, that is energy form of ATP will be consumed to produce ADP in the presence of cofactor magnesium. Then the enzyme involved is phosphofructokinase. Phosphofructokinase. So this has enzyme, it has coenzyme ATP and it has cofactors magnesium. So cofactors are majorly metals that are involved in the reaction. This is stage 3. Okay? So once this breaks down, it will be giving us fructose 1,6 by phosphate. How do we sketch it? So, this is fructose 1,6 by phosphate. Fructose 1,6 by phosphate. Okay? Then, what, up, what also happened is that it will undergo a reversible reaction again. In this reversible reaction, it will be giving us two compounds called glyceride 3-phosphate and dihydroacetone phosphate. Then, what is their structure? This one is... This one is for glyceride 3-phosphate. This is glyceride 3-phosphate. Then, plus, this is G3P, glyceride height, glyceride height 3-phosphate. Okay? Then, plus, it also gives us another compound called dihydroacetone phosphate. 
dihydroxyl acetone phosphate. So this is CH2 C CH2O. So this is called dihydroacetone phosphate. Dihydroxy acetone phosphate. Then this compound will also reconvert to this. When it reconverts to this, it will take place. Okay, for this reversible aspect, it does its occurrence with the help of an enzyme called adolescence. Okay, then this is stage four. So as it reconverts to this, it will do that with the help of triose, triose isomerase, triose phosphate isomerase. Now, once this reconvert to this, we'll be having two, two glyceride three phosphate. So we'll be having two, two glyceride three phosphate. So these two glyceride three phosphate is what we continue the glycolytic pathway to get to the end product. Then, when I say this will undergo reversible reaction. If you undergo re reversible reaction, it will be in the presence of glyceride 3 phosphate glyceride 3 phosphate the dehydrogenase. The so that is the enzyme that will be involved. So it will take place in the presence of it will take place in the presence of this this coenzyme and also in the presence of this coenzyme to give you This coenzyme. Then this glyceride like three phosphate, when it breaks down, it will be giving us one three by phosphor glycerate. Now see the structure of one three by phosphor glycerate. So that will be two molecules because this is two molecules. This will also give you two molecules. So this is So, this is a typical structure of 1,3 by phosphoglycerate. So, it is two molecules. Two molecules. It is two molecules because here, there are two molecules. Gotten from this, reconverting to this, making it two molecules. Then, this, we talk about involve a coenzyme called nicotinamide adenine di dinucleotide. Then this one is reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So once this goes into the reaction, it will be producing this. Then this is stage four, this is stage five, and this is stage six. Okay? 
Then we go to the stage 7 of this. That is an irreversible stage that requires that requires 2 ADP to produce 2 ATP. So, we now say that from here to this point, from here to this point are called preparatory stage. From here to this point are called preparatory stage. What from here down is called payoff stage. Okay? This will also happen in the presence of the cofactors called magnesium. So, and the, co and the enzyme involved is called phosphoglycerate kinase. So, phosphoglycerate kinase. This is the enzyme involved. This is stage 6 and this is stage 7. So, what's this? Break down one tray by phosphoglycerate. It will be giving us 3 phosphoglycerate. So, the 3 phosphoglycerate will be 2 phosphoglycerate. Phos 3 phosphoglycerate. Now, 3 phosphoglycerate will be giving us. Typical structure for 3 phosphoglycerate. Now, we now say it continues again by an reversible process, by a reversible process to give us what we call 2 phosphoglycerate. 2, two phosphoglycerate. By an enzyme, phosphoglycerate mutates. Okay. This is a reversible part of this reaction. Okay. Now, how do we draw these two phosphoglycerate? These two attach here mean two molecules of it because from the here, from the payoff stage, we have two molecules of glycerate 3 phosphate. So, how do we sketch the structure? We say that the structure will look like this. The structure will look like this. This is 2 phosphoglycerate. 2 phosphoglycerate. Okay? Then, when we get these 2 phosphoglycerate, when we get these 2 phosphoglycerate, what will happen is that another, another step will go on. And that step is a reversible reaction. That reversible will go this way. So once this break down, it will break down by an enzyme called enolase. And there will be production of water. There will be production of water in this reaction. Okay? So once it breaks down by this enolase, We'll be having phosphoenol pyruvate. And what is the structure? 2 phosphoenol pyruvate. 2 phosphoenol pyruvate.
two phosphoenol pyruvate. This is called two phosphoenol pyruvate. Okay? This is stage seven, eight, nine. Then the last part of it, this phosphor, two phosphor enol pyruvate will this phosphor enol pyruvate will break down to give you the last product called pyruvate. Then we put it this way. And this process is an irreversible process. So put it this way. ATP will be produced here. Then ADP. Then pyruvate kinase. That will be giving us the pyruvate we talk about. This is called pyruvate. That is the last stage of this. So, this is the ninth stage and this is the last stage. This is what happened in glycolytic pathway. This is called pyruvate and it occurs by an irreversible process. Now here there is production of ATP, then here, enolase add and the production of water and phosphoenol pyruvate. And this will be two molecules. Why are we having two molecules? Because from, we, from here, we have two of these, breaking down to two of these, to two of these, to two of, to two of this, then to two of this, then to two of this, then to two of this. So that tells us that when a glucose is fully broken down in the process of glycolysis, that is in the cell cytosols, that it will produce two molecules of pyruvate. Two molecules of pyruvate. It will also produce two molecules of reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Then, remember, at the preparatory stage, we have that ATP is consumed. One molecule of ATP consumed here, one molecule of ATP consumed here as well. That two molecules of ATP are consumed at the preparatory stage. Then, we have to pay them back. Here, to pay it off, two molecules of this ATP will pay off. Then, we have two molecules of NADH. We also have two molecules of, we have another molecule of ATP here, and that is uh, two molecules. We have two molecules of ATP here. So, these two molecules of ATP produced here is what that we, that we produce finally. That is, our product of glycolysis is two pyruvate, two pyruvate, plus 2 NADH NADH plus 2 ATP plus 2 molecules of water so that is what you have there then it is also noted that in this reaction we have some points that are reversible and some points that are irreversible. Here is irreversible. Step one is irreversible. Step two, reversible. Step three, irreversible. Step four, reversible. Then step five. Step five is irreversible because this can be converted to this. So this can be converted to this and this can be converted to this by triosphosphate and summary. Step five, step five, reversible. Then step six, 
reversible step seven, irreversible step eight, reversible step nine, reversible step ten, irreversible. So you have to take note of these points that are irreversible. And also take note of the points that are reversible. Also take note the points that we have cofactors and coenzymes. Here we have cofactor coenzyme, we have cofactor coenzyme, and also the enzyme itself. So take note of all this. Now, in the next part of this video, we'll go into TCA cycle or tricarboxylic cycle or Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. So that we'll see how it will be able to convert these two pyruvate. How it will break them down more and more. Now, this NADH we have here, we have to take note of it that we have two NADH here and that we have two ATP here. This two NADH is one of the molecules that will go into electron transport chain to be converted to ATP. So, have it in your mind that in glycolysis, we have two pyruvate, two NADH, and two ATP. The NADH aspect will go to TCA cycle to be converted more. Um, the NADH cycle will go to electron transport chain, I mean, please, to convert it to ATP. Why these two pyruvates will go to TCA cycle or citric acid cycle or tricarboxylic cycle or Krebs cycle to be converted more and more so that more ATP will be produced. Thanks for watching the video. Please don't forget to click like button. Subscribe as watch it. See you in the next video.